sorry, I think this is off center, but it can't be helped. So here we are. Hi folks, my name is Jen. Um, welcome, welcome to the chaos. Uh, as you can see, I'm back on a camera um, because my phone is no longer allowing me to film one video. Um, it's splitting it between videos and I can't figure out how to get them uploaded on YouTube. So this is the third time we're filming this. This video is gonna be very, I need to put that down. Um, Okay, my video today that I wanted to have for for y'all basically is um, I was thinking of giving a tour of all of my interesting books. Like books that I basically think are particularly special. They're not like my everyday um everything else that's on my shelves, there's something a little bit different about them. Um, whether they are collectors, anniversaries, special editions, whether they're vintage books, um, they're particularly pretty editions, like I have some paper mill press books um, that I want to show you, and then I have a few signed books, and then I have a few like just, they're just interesting books that I thought that maybe you guys might be interested in as well, possibly. Uh, so I figured, let's get to it. I think we're going to start. Um, so I have this small stack of books here that is basically books that are like movie tie-ins or movie novelizations or stuff like that basically. So um, first off I have the movie novelization of Rugrats in Paris. Um, so of course it has the photos from the movie in it. Uh, then I have movie novelization of How the Grinch Stole Christmas with photos in it, and Dinosaur, if anybody remembers this one, I don't know, this one was kind of weird, um, and it has that, and then I also have the moving tie-in copy of Stormbreaker, um, or they called it Operation Stormbreaker, it's the first book in the Alex Rider series, um, and it has photos from the movie. And then this book, so I haven't seen this movie. Um, it is The World's Greatest Athlete. <clears throat> and I guess this is like a Disney film from like the 60s or 70s. And yeah, it's got like photos in it from the movie too, but I haven't seen this one. Um, I read this years ago. It's really silly from what I remember. Um, and then I have this copy of Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm and this as you can tell has the um, pictures from the Shirley Temple movie in it which are like so sweet and honestly is the best part of this book. I did not enjoy this book but I love um, the movie. So and these belong to like my uncles, I think, when they were growing up. Um, and this is F Troop. I have watched episodes of this before, but it, it's not a show that I particularly um, enjoyed from the, I remember, of the reruns that I've seen. However, uh, the Beverly Hillbillies love, love, I love watching the episodes of this, or I did when I was growing up. I honestly haven't seen it in a long time. I desperately wanted to be Ellie Mae and have like a pet raccoon and a possum and just everything as a kid, so, um, but yeah, as you can see, there's various bits of artwork in here too. I think this is just kind of, you know, cool, but... Anyway, just interesting random um, stuff. Uh, continuing on with kind of random-ish books. I have a couple of 
movie coffee table type style books. I have The Vault, Doctor Who, um, and this is the first 50 years of Doctor Who. Um, so I have like, I think this is like a map of the studio. And yeah, it's just a book about the series. As you can see, about the whole history, it goes through each doctor, each era, and everything about the whole, like, making of it. This is more recently. That's horrifying. Um, yeah, so it's just, like, a wicked cool uh, book. I haven't read this one yet, um, but I have started reading this other one, which is Back to the Future, the visual history, and this is the same kind of, like, general idea. It's about the making of the movies. I adore this photo a lot. Um, if you've been around here a while, you know that I absolutely adore this movie. It's like the all three of them are like my favorite movies of all time. What I like about this collection is not only does it give you information about everything to do with like making movies, it also has interactive pieces like this drawing of the flux capacitor that comes apart, this poster, the pamphlet from Save the Clock Tower comes apart, there's like, um, oh, can I find it? Yeah, this is my favorite part. Um, this is the letter that Marty writes to Doc in the first movie, and actually you can open this envelope, and there's a copy of what the letter actually looked like inside of it. I just, I love this book so much. Um, so... Yeah, I just think that's, like, wicked cool. Uh, as far as a place to go next. Oh my goodness. So, I have a couple of omnibuses and, like, special edition um, things. Mostly manga, graphic novels, stuff like that. Um, I do have the omnibus of Chobits 1, um, but my brother has it right now. Um, so this is Chobits two omnibus um, and what I like most about omnibuses other than the fact that they're all here and I don't have to like try to find every volume um, I also really like the colored artwork and like first page or so that's usually featured in the front um, and then I also have the omnibuses of orange which is a series that I really love. If you are in the market, by the way, so beautiful. If you are in the market for a manga series that involves time travel and you don't mind having your freaking heart ripped the hell out of your chest, I would really suggest this series because, damn, um, it's Orange by Ichigo Takano. Uh, then you probably saw oops, you probably saw these recently, but it's my like really nice on bus of Girl from the Other Side um, by Nagabe. They're just absolutely stunning. I think they're like the most stunning um, volumes that I have on my shelves. To be completely honest, I want to collect like the other ones in the future. This is the second one, just really incredibly gorgeous. I kind of wish they would do this like fancy version of like other stuff. No, I can't show that because that's a spoiler. Okay, um, and then for another omnibus I have this chunky monkey and this is Sandman uh, by Neil Gaiman. As you can see, it is huge, black sprayed edges, really gorgeous. I have two omnibuses. I am not picking up the other one because it looks almost exactly the same and it's really heavy. So, really pretty, like that. And it has this gorgeous opening. Of course, it opens right up into the story. But they're 
um, really beautiful. I think they're kind of expensive. Um, these were like um, a Christmas gift from my husband a couple of years ago. So that oh, is that. And moving on with special edition type things. Um, and also, they're kind of bind ups, kind of less things. Um, Fruits Basket is one of my favorite, oops, sorry, um, is one of my favorite manga of all time, basically. And so I definitely wanted to collect the collector's edition when they came out um, a couple of years ago. So they're all gorgeous. It's a bind up of two volumes in each one. So there's Toru and her mother on the cover. And I really love they feature like special characters on every cover and they have just really pretty artwork. Um, right here in each volume and I just absolutely adore it. Um, I will show you. There's the boys, of course. Volume 2. I'm not going to show you all of it in every single one because that will take forever, but I'll show you like really cool pages. Um, and here's my blush, Shigure. Um, and I believe this artwork is, this is featuring how the characters look in the new um, series. So, yeah, uh, the new anime series, I mean, which I actually haven't watched too much of. I've only seen like the first like two episodes so far, but I do plan on making my way through it at some point um, because I wanted to kind of compare and contrast with the original anime that I watched what back in like high school I think and then um, I watched again in college I believe and enjoyed but um, I think the new series follows this actual manga series a lot more Closely, and it goes on for longer because the original series doesn't go on that long. That's really cool. Sad. Boo hiss. Whoop, that might be a spoiler here. Let's look at that page. <laughs> I also just really like, um, I really like how this collection features like special care. I love this volume because it's like Taru's um, best friends from school and they actually kind of remind me a little bit of a couple of friends I had in high school. But um, yeah, I really like how this collection features like important characters within this series and I just absolutely um, adore the extra art. I think they really went above and beyond for the um, these like editions. I think they're like super cool. That's cool. And here's the, the last one. I don't know if anyone else also cried at some point while they were reading this series because that was definitely a thing that I did. Um, I think I remember back when I first read it and because I definitely cried this time around, the last time I read this whole thing. So I have a um, collector's edition of the Lorax. Um, I don't, I'm not really 100% sure what makes this the collector's edition. I think it might be because it's like, as you can see, it's gold and shiny. Um, I'd never owned a copy of this growing up. Um, so when this is Cold Cares for Kids, they did this several 
years ago had like some Dr. Seuss and since this is my favorite Dr. Seuss story I ended up with with this one. So and other editions I have this really pretty copy of A Conjuring of Light. It's the Barnes and Noble um, special edition so it has like silver cover instead of the white and the end papers have fan art on them. They're like wicked pretty. I think they list the author, um, the artist in here somewhere as well. Um, the artist who did the fan art. And I actually, when I discovered something fun when I was pulling these books together earlier, um, is a signed copy, which I did not realize at the time. So that's wicked cool. For other... Oh, this is a special edition. I also included some of my cookbooks in here, <laughs> which might be a little bit extra, but whatever. Um, this is... Uh, a two volume of Mastering the Art of French Cooking. So here's the original by Julia Child, Louis Set Bertol, and Simone Beck. And then there's volume two. Um, they are really pretty. No, I have not um, read them, but I have started, I have poked around a little bit. In volume one, I'd really like to learn more about different types of cooking, um, and I actually really want to put these to good use. But yeah, so I have these because several years ago I was uh, became a little obsessed with Julia Child. So, uh, and then for other things, well, we have some anniversary books here. Uh, first up is this anniversary edition of, oops, sorry, the glare is terrible, anniversary edition of The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. Um, this is one of my favorite books of all time. And I guess this cover is based off of maybe like an old cover or like plans that Ellen Raskin had, because in the back of the book it shows like her drawings and plans for how she wanted the cover to like look. That's wicked cool. Uh, and then uh, you probably saw these two recently, um, but I have the 25th anniversary edition of Maniac McGee, uh, which just means that it has an interview with Jerry Spinelli in the back of the book. Um, and then I also have the anniversary edition of Stormbreaker. That's the first Alex Ryder book. And that just means there's two extra short stories about Alex Ryder in the back of the book. Uh, and then we get into other interesting looking edition, special editions. So this is interesting. It's one of those Puffin and Pantone ones. You probably also recently saw this. Um, so it's like the, the paint color. So this one's like the shades of gold kind of deal, and it's Christmas Carol and other stories. Section. I really need to get this sticker off of there. Um, and then there is this uh, Barnes and Noble signature edition of Great Expectations. So it has this really hot painting <laughs> dude on the cover. There's not really anything extra special about the interior. It's got like, um, what is that? Deckled, ed deckled edges? That's what it is, right? When it's like rough like that. Um, and then there's like an inscription from someone who gifted this to the previous owner of this book, which is always sweet. Um, but yeah, this is a signature edition. And then I have this uh, special like penguin edition of Haunting of Hill House. I don't know if you can see it so well. Um, but there's like this like bumpy plastic like 3D thing to this. Um, it has one of my favorite quotes from the book on the back. Um, and this has like black sprayed edges, super creepy. Um, it also fades kind of interestingly. 
in here and there's also an introduction in here written by Guillermo del Toro which is pretty cool. Okay, moving on I think we'll go into let's do pretty editions. How about we go to that first? Um, so I have this children's classic edition of the Scarlet Pimpernel. Um, so it's just got this kind of interesting thing in here and there's not really any artwork I don't think. No. Um, it's just kind of like an interesting cover here. And then I have this uh, it's a Chatham River Press Just So Stories. It's kind of has this weird like marbling effect on here. It's gilded. And it carries on in, into the beginning. Um, and it has like kind of interesting drawings. And then I've had this for like forever. This is the Reader's Digest version of Around the World in 80 Days. I guess it's like not, compared to the other ones, it's not that impressive, but I've always really um, liked this and thought this was particularly pretty. And I love the like watercolory drawings that are in here. There's the man himself, Philly Spock. Um, and then I have, like I mentioned, beginning I have some paper mill press books so um, I have the scarlet letter and what I really like about these is I really like how it's like a hard cover but it's soft <laughs> at the same time and I also really like that they include a quote on the back of the book as well um, and then I've got 20,000 leaves under the sea so the same same kind of deal here. Um, sense and sensibility. Gulliver, Gulliver's Travels. I also really like the thing on the back. And the Secret Garden, um, which I think is my favorite out of all of these, both reading-wise and just how it, how it looks. Um, then I've got this Barnes & Noble edition of the Odyssey, which is just feels buttery and is aesthetically incredibly pleasing. It also has blue um, sprayed edges. and. I'm not really a fan of this. And to me, this screams 1990s doctor's office, so I'm not a fan of that particular look. Um, but the, this is gorgeous. Um, I kind of wish this edition, this translation, was as pretty as the outside is, but it's not. But um, it's a very, a very pretty looking edition anyway. Um, then I have, this is like the Barnes & Noble um, children's classics children's library edition which is uh, the little princess which is absolutely gorgeous as you can see it's all I love this a lot um you've got gilt edges you've got pretty end papers you also have really pretty um paintings in here love them um just stunning um, absolutely stunning. I cannot wait to one day read this to my kids because, like, freaking gorgeous, like a storybook. Um, and then oh, I have this, um, this one, I'm, I'm not sure if this is like a special special edition or not. This was an extra book in an owl crate that I got. But I haven't seen this on the shelves at any store so far, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, but this is Sleepy Hollow and Other Stories, it's... I, I love this, how freaking like, cool it is. I also really love, you can see Ichabod and then the Headless Horseman. Cool. And then, last of like, really pretty editions, um, is 
The Count of Monte Cristo. And honestly, this is, I mean, it's really pretty. I, this translation's great because it's a Robin Bus translation. Um, but the only trouble with these, um, this is a penguin. Yes, a penguin's classic edition. The only problem with this edition is that this shit comes off on your fingers if you sweat <laughs> while you're reading this book. The paint's gonna chip off, which is unfortunate. I don't know if that happens with all of them. If you have dealt with more books in the Penguin's Classics edition, please let me know because this is just happening and it's kind of sucks in all honesty. But uh, yeah, it's really pretty to look at though and appropriate with the masks. Then we get into, I think we will go with random books here. I have some really random books that I think are just kind of cool, the editions that I have. I have a Spanish language version of In the Time of the Butterflies by Julia Alvarez. This is En el Tiempo de las Mariposas. Um, I got this originally because I was going, I was trying to relearn Spanish when the pandemic started um, because I used to be really not fluent but close to feeling rather comfortable um, and then I lost it all. So um, I've been trying to relearn it. It's harder now than it was. Don't know what that says about my brain. Um, but yeah, so I got this so I could reward myself for studying properly. Um, at this point, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to read this confidently, um, but I, I would like to dig into this in the language it was intended to be read in. Um, these are kind of cool. I've had these, I think, the longest out of all of these books. Um, and this is The World's Best Fairy Tales. This is a two volume set. Yes, uh, Reader's Digest editions. Um, these are anthologies. Uh, they have kind of, the, they're a little worn. They have gilded edges here. Um, they have kind of cool artwork on the inside. Um, really pretty. And my favorite part of them is when you put them on the shelf, you can see Hansel and Gretel going to the gingerbread house. Other interesting kind of collectory things. Oh, this one. Um, this is a Library of America book. It comes with its own sleeve. And it is the writings of Benjamin Franklin. So that's uh, wicked cool. I feel like this is not one of these books that I can read all the way through. I'd have to like pick here and there at it for a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Benjamin Franklin kind of fascinates me a little bit. So, And then we can get into, I think... We'll get into my signed books. Um, I have a couple of other signed um, V. Schwab books. So I have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and also I have a signed copy of Gallon, which Gallon is just stunning. Anyway, there, signed copy of that, which is pretty cool, just beautiful. Um, and then this was my, a couple of these are recent things. This I knew was signed when I bought it, which I thought was just like an added kind of cool factor to this. It's the Trackers historical fiction book. Um, and then this was my surprise that I didn't even realize this is like signed, which is like really freaking cool, a Clive Cussler book. Um, and then uh, 
these couple, I, did I pre-order this? I think I pre-ordered this, possibly. Yeah, and it's All Fly Away by Rudy Francisco, which I got signed, which is just awesome, because he's one of my favorite poets. And I also, I lucked out with this one. I did not know this was a signed copy when I bought it. Um, it's B um, by Sarah Kay, who's another one of my favorite poets. And this is signed. Um, and this is one of a couple of books that they're illustrated poems. Um, B is like my favorite, favorite poem of hers. And they're just one poem little books that are illustrated. I believe her friend illustrated them for her. So that was B. This is the type. So they all have little um, artwork on them. And all are wild wonder. Which is like also really pretty. I really like the artwork in here. Especially. Um, so that's, those are pretty cool. I do have another signed book, but it's like somewhere at my parents' house, and um, that one is the only one that, when I got them signed, it wasn't that I pre-ordered or that I lucked out or anything. Um, it was because I actually met the author, and it's um, a copy of Wait Till Helen Comes by Mary Downing Hahn. Um, she came to my elementary school. And, um, I, it was such a long time ago that I don't fully remember the whole experience. I know that she talked to us about books, and I think she might have read something to us. Um, but I remember her being very kind. Um, so, yeah. I, I do have that kicking around somewhere in my parents' house. I just don't currently have it with me. Uh, let's see. As far as, like, oh, other illustrated books. Um, do I have to take that down again? No, I'm not going to take that down again because this video is going to look really weird. Um, I have illustrated copies of four Harry Potter books. Um, I, you guys probably know what they look like anyway. They're really cool. Um, uh, those are all the ones that I own for illustrated editions at this point. Um, I have checked a little bit at secondhand bookstores for the other ones. So I'm not like giving her money, but I can still have, you know, books that I'm collecting. But uh, yeah, I haven't had any luck so far. I've found ones, but not like, um, not book five. I didn't see anybody had book five, which is valid because I think that's fairly new, so it probably wouldn't have shown up yet. Um, other illustrated books I have, though, um, oh yeah, I also have a Scots edition of the first Harry Potter book up there. It's just in the Scots language, like from Scotland. It's cool. Um, other illustrated books, though, that I have is this uh, ghastly, sorry about the glare, Ghastly, uh, oh my goodness, Ghostly Tales and Eerie Poems of Edgar Allan Poe, my goodness. Um, the cover is the artwork from, uh, The Mask of the Red Death, which is, uh, traumatized me as a child. Um, I really like the artwork that's in here. I think that's one of the best parts of this book entirely. It was definitely the best part of reading this. Um, last year. This is my favorite piece. I think this is from um, The Fall of the House of Usher. This is my favorite art piece in the whole book. It's so freaking creepy. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, then I have just more really random-ish type of things. I have a couple of companion books to things. So I've got, probably said this recently, it's the Demigod Files. So it's like a companion book to the Percy Jackson series, and this is like, it has this cool map of Camp Half-Blood in it, it has like, I, I think like an extra short story or something, and then it also has like, um, interviews that, um, Percy 
did with other characters. And then I also have this companion book to the Princess Diary series called Princess Lessons. And this is pretty cool because um, not only is it just kind of cute and it has like extra like Mia material and stuff like that, but it also is very useful um, because it talks about like beauty and etiquette and how to write a thank you note, how to eat at like a fancy um, restaurant if you end up going to one, fashion tips. Um, <laughs> I like that. It's like her grand mirror's ideal. And then this is what Mia looks like. What's that, Louie? Um, and yeah, it just talks about different stuff like that. How to protect yourself. Um, how to deal with like boys and stuff. It's so besides being like a cute thing, it's also just a little bit useful too. Um, and then I also have this is really cool. It's the Sherlock Holmes Handbook by Ransom Riggs. So I was like, what? Uh, the Methods, Mysteries of the World's Greatest Detective. And this is wicked cool because, um, well firstly, it has some really cool artwork in it, but it also has just really interesting tips in it. Like, oh, I love this. Like how to find a secret passage, um, how to question a suspect, how to crack a safe, how to decode a cipher, like just interesting things, which is like actual um, information that was like gleaned from the stories and stuff. And it's just, if you're like a fan of Sherlock Holmes or Vintage Mystery or something like that, it's just fascinating. If you want to learn how to try to find a secret room, I've definitely applied that in every um, old old, old, old building that I've ever spent the night in. Um, haven't found a secret passage yet, but, you know, hope springs eternal. Uh, and then, other uh, interesting things. These are more like fan things, I guess. Um, just really random, geeky uh, cookbooks that I happen to own. Which, first of all, I have the Geeky Chef cookbook, um, which has like all kinds of geek recipes, so, um, so that's the introduction. Uh, so there's like recipes for butter beer, um, blood, <laughs> or, like vampires, um, ambrosia from Battlestar Galactica. Uh, let me see. That's another cool one. Mutter's milk from Firefly. Uh, there's fish fingers and custard from Doctor Who. There's lamb stew with plums from Hunger Games. There's, I actually don't know what the heck that thing is. Um, lemon cakes from Game of Thrones, I believe. Uh, yeah, just interesting stuff. I have tried a couple of things from here and they were pretty good. Uh, and then I have the Boss Burgers Burger Book. Which, the amazing thing about this is, besides the fact that they, I love the artwork, also, Linda's my girl, um, it sells Parsnips Vu Francais Burger, it tells you the episode, it comes from season 5, episode 3, Friends with Burger Fits, and then it explains what the thing is. So this, for example, is an all-beef burger served on a baguette with sprouts, blue cheese, aioli, um, and a dash of Dijon mustard, and comes with rosemary, lavender, parsnip fries. And then it gives you the recipe. Um, we have not tried that one. Um, let me see. I don't know if I can remember which one we have tried. I also really like that in here they tell you how to cook fries properly, which is very helpful one that we've we've made like two or three from here and I can't locate and I don't want you to have to sit here and listen to me. But anyway, this is a wicked cool um, cookbook. It's really awesome. It's real recipes for joke burgers. <laughs> uh, then I have 
um, the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook. So I've also tried a couple of recipes from here. It's got like everything you could possibly like. Um, like uh, good food with bad relatives, delights down the alley, treats from the train, um, favorite cooks dishes. They have like stuff from Hogwarts itself, stuff from the train ride. So they have like sweets in here and things like that, pumpkin pasties and things. That's pretty cool. Uh, then I have Back to the Future official Hill Valley cookbook. I have not made anything from here yet. But I can't wait to because I freaking love Back to the Future. What I really love about this is um, it has dishes from 1985 in it. So it has Uncle Jody, Joey's parole cake, <laughs> for example. And then they have stuff from 1955. Let's see if I can pull up a good image here. Here you go. Doc Brown's time-altering chicken pot pie. Uh, and then they have stuff from the future such as hoverboard cookies. And alternate 1985 in all of its horror. <laughs> World's luckiest shrimp cocktail. And then my personal favorite, which is from the 1885 recipes, look, it's tea service from the train, which looks wicked cool. Um, so yeah, this is just cool. Some of the dishes seem like it's just made to fit in with a theme, kind of like a cheesy restaurant or something, but then other dishes seem like, no, some, a lot of thought was put into this, which I appreciate. Um, and then... <laughs> Last interesting book, an interesting cookbook, is this cook anime um, book, which is the same kind of general idea. So it has recipes from different um, anime. So, for example, if you really like a run high school host club like I do, they have Nabe, a hot pot meal, and it'll tell you how to make that. Or if you like Yuri on Ice, if you're a big fan of that, they have Katsudon. Um, pork cutlet rice bowl and yeah it'll give you like information about everything and also gives you a little bit of like a background of um, the dish itself and it's wicked cool I haven't yeah like I said I haven't made anything from here yet um, but I'd really want to soon right and then let's get into my vintage books I think those are the only things left so Let's tackle those. First up, we'll do a book that looks vintage but is not actually vintage. And it's this copy of Murder of the Orient on the Orient Express. Um, this is just a vintage reprint. Um, this is how the book would have liked, I believe, at the time of its first printing, um, including like the ad on the back. Um, so that's just. I don't want to, sorry, I have something pressed in here, I don't want to like drop it, but yeah, so this is basically what it would have looked like, which is pretty cool. First off, I've got this really cool copy of Understood Betsy by Dorothy Canfield Fisher. I know like the entire thing, like the dust jacket's crumpling, which is unfortunate, but um, the book itself is also just really pretty. So that's what it looks like. And then I really love the end papers on it. Everything's like all green. And this is a cool thing about this book. I mean, this is one of the cool things about it. So, okay. Um, one cool thing is the artwork that is in here, which is gorgeous. The other cool thing is this, which is pasted on the inside. And it says, this book is presented, it's not a typewriter so it's all messed up, um, presented to Gloria Baldessari, 5th grade, Minnetola School, as third prize in the Buena Vista Township Arithmetic Cons Contest, May 1930, Miss Ruth Lafferty, teacher, J.E. Phipps, supervising principal. 
don't know where that is. California? That's Buena Vista, right? Um, yeah, so this is really cool. And she won this, apparently. And then we ended up with it. I ended up with it. But anyway, I just, yeah, I thought that's like a cool detail about this book. Um, then I have this cool copy of Heidi. You can see with all the goats. These end papers are just freaking gorgeous. And then we have the artwork, which is <laughs> slightly terrifying. Um, and the artwork is all kind of like interesting. So some of it is pretty colorful like that. And that's really cool. And then other pieces of it are black and white. But yeah, it's a cool copy of that. Uh, then I have this complete short stories um, collection of Mark Twain um, and this is just from like the 50s so it's like old but not that old uh, and then I've got you saw this recently it is my finished copy of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe um, by C.S. Lewis so this is back when it was still uh, let's see, this is in the 70s, um, this is back when it was still considered to be the first in this series, although now I believe it's the second in the series. Um, and then I also have these, uh, Fontana books, I think they're all from like the 50s and 60s, and it's, um, this collection of Niall Marsh books, so the covers are very, like, intense. I really, I really love this one. Suck to death in a seething cauldron of mud. Uh, my boss walked by when I was reading this in the lunchroom and she was like, um, what's going on with that? Um, this one, I, I love this. It's freaking ridiculous. Spencer's in Jeopardy. A fresh victim for the Black Mass. The back is drugs. The Black Mass. Murder. Just crazy. And then this is uh, Scales of Justice. So yeah, they, they all have like this cheesy feel of like a Hitchcockian movie poster kind of feel to them. And uh, it's, it's a mood. These, oh my goodness. Oh, so this is, uh, I have an old copy of Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes. This is from like the 30s. So it's like old, but it's not old, old, old kind of book, but it's really cool. Then I have these vintage, um, these are actually my husband's grandmother's. Um, they are vintage copies of cookbooks. So we have the International Cookbook Illustrated. Um, and this one is from 1929. Um, and I really like this because so, this is apparently, like, an author or somebody involved in this, and what I really like about this, too, is they have the photos of all the chefs that contributed to this, um, from all over the world. So, uh, the U.S., Canada, England, France, Scotland, Australia, Mexico, Turkey, um, and... This is pretty cool too. There's also a chef, two chefs from Japan and one from Palestine and like, yeah, so it's just like, it is the international cookbook. So I really like that they're all kind of like involved in this and, um, it's definitely an interesting way of doing recipes in the old way. So it's not like deeply informative <laughs> like things are now, um, but it's really, it's an interesting book. Um, and then there's this homemaker's cookbook um, and guide to nutrition. You can see maybe there's a lady bossed on there and this is kind of interesting. Marbling on the ends it has like a and papers are kind of cool. And this one 
is from 1946. And yeah, so it has just talking about vitamins and minerals and planning family meals and this says lunchbox menus for industrial workers, school child's lunch, um, and just interesting kind of stuff like that. Ooh, look, colored photographs, you know, um, eating habits, things like that. Just interesting, um, I feel like I'm saying interesting a lot, but no, it's just legitimately kind of cool um, looking stuff. I'm sure the nutrition things are very different now than they were in 1946, so that's also a nice little time capsule as well. Um, as for other vintage books, um, I've got... First up, I have this copy of The Missing Chums by F.W. Dixon, so this is a Hardy Boys, um, and this is their end papers. This is, I think, technically a first edition, because this is like, there's no other printings listed on here, so. Um, and then I have some um, vintage Nancy Drews. I'm in the market for like vintage Nancy Drews. So, um, I have these, which are like, it's printed right on the cover, like how they are now, or how they were in the 90s. So, um, we have the glue in the crumbling wall, and then there, and papers kind of look like that. Um, glue in the crossword cipher has a little different end papers. Same goes for... Mystery of the Fire Dragon. They're all like little bits and pieces from the covers of the books. And the Seeker of the Golden Pavilion has this creepy end paper. And Nancy Drew looks kind of rough and ragged. Um, and they all kind of have like ads with the book in the back. And then these copies of Nancy Drew um, are different. So they have like the dust jackets on them. And they have ads for other series on the back. And the end papers on Quest of the Missing Map is kind of cool. I think that's really detailed and kind of cool. Um, and then Ghost of Blackwood Hall is this end paper, which I've seen in other editions before, which is kind of cool. And then the Scarlet Slipper Mystery, yeah, that has the same end paper, um, but different ads on the back. Uh, then I have 450 from Paddington. Um, so this is an old copy of the Agatha Christie novel. This is actually the British um, copy from the 50s, which I think their cover is a lot prettier than the American one. Um, and then I have like a couple of vintage books about Vermont. So there's like this one, which is Mischief in the Mountains, um, and it's just like legends and stuff like that about Vermont. It has cool artwork. Um, and then it's got Contrary Country, which is the same kind of like deal, like legends and stuff like that about Vermont. Um, and then this one is I, I really like it. It's Successful Calamity, um, and it is about a writer who is from the city and moves to Vermont, and I really like this because you see the map on the cover of the farm, and then it's in gold on the actual cover rather than the dust jacket, so that's wicked cool. And then um, I have this old copy from the 30s of the collected poems of T.S. Eliot. And then I have this copy of Treasure Island, which is wicked cool. It is a educator classic library edition. It's a little awkward to read because it's pretty big, but it's awesome um, because it has really nice drawings inside. It also has these footnotes that'll tell you on the side about like interesting things that you might not know about, like a brace of pistols, a sexton. Um, let's see, what else? What a black dog is. 
what keel hauling is, um, which is not a good thing. Uh, let me see, I got on a page where there's no facts. Um, what a clove hitch is, different types of rope and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. And then in the back of the book, they have some information about pirates. This really cool diagram of the Hispaniola and how to like identify different parts of a ship. Uh, some information about Robert Louis Stevenson himself. And then there's some information about pirates and pirate treasure. So it's pretty cool. Um, and then we get into my last couple of vintage books. So speaking of Robert Louis Stevenson, I have this copy of The Wrong Box by him and his stepson Lloyd Osborne. Um, I don't know if you can see this too well. I'm going to try to show you maybe. I love this cover so much. It's so pretty. It actually kind of reminds me of like the old like like decorated tea bricks that you see in like museums. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Um, this is a copy of this book. It's a um, dark comedy. This is from 1905, so you gotta be kind of like big and gentle with it. For such an old book, the type is large, which was really nice. I appreciated that when I was reading this. And the back is the same kind of deal as the front, but it's just wicked pretty. Um, and then have this. <laughs> Christmas Stories Collections by Charles Dickens with the absolutely horrifying cover um, and equally horrifying art throughout. <laughs> um, but very interesting book. And last but not least is the oldest book that I own. Um, and this is A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare and this is a copy from 1888. And I this because there's already pages that are trying to come out and I don't want any more to happen. I haven't really read from this book in its entirety. I know I did when I first got this when I was a kid, um, but I, I'm i very very careful with it. First of all because it is so fragile and second of all because there's no footnotes. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I, you can see it's kind of actually down a little bit but yeah so that's that copy so yeah that is that is everything that is all of my special or vintage or collectors books such as they are thank you guys so much for watching though if you have any wicked cool additions let me know. In fact, why don't you make a video about your ones if you are so inclined. That's something that you want to do because I'm nosy and I like to look at other people's like interesting um, books that they own as well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and let me know if you really liked any of these. Also let me know if you would like me to do like a more cl closer involved like flip through of any Thing or a closer look at any of these particular books um, like I did with uh, the Tim Burton book from a while ago um, oh and if you're wondering hey I asked about that uh, weird poetry book you have can you do a flip through of it I did not forget I wrote it in my notes um, I just haven't like actually sat down and filmed it yet um, but so I haven't forgotten I will get I will get to that but yeah if you'd like any flip through of any of these other ones please let me know and I will put that on the list. <laughs> um, anyway, like I said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for bearing with me as I handle my technical difficulties. Um, if you are new here, sorry, uh, I'm usually better quality and actually edited. Um, so yeah, but if you'd like to subscribe anyway, please do so. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.